Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies bringing you something a little different. Today I'm going to construct my first breadboard battlefield. You may be asking what in the blue hell is a breadboard battlefield? Bread companies use to deliver bread to supermarkets in the morning time. So if you're walking past a, a shop in the morning time, you usually see a stack of these things outside. If you borrow one, uh, they make a really nice base for constructing a nice diorama or a small battlefield, something like uh, Farmies on Parade and that kind of thing. I've dabbled with the idea of the kind of rusted, wrecked old Necromundan look. Um, it's cool, it's fine, everyone else's table looks like that. So I'm going to go for something that's inspired me a little more over the last kind of couple of years and that's cyberpunk. So. I'm going to construct this bedboard battlefield in a way that uh, is aesthetically pleasing to me and then next video we're going to go into the painting process of it and uh, i'm going to use a lot of cyberpunk uh, inspired colors to make that happen so let's see what i can do huh stick around guys enjoy the video Okay, first thing was first. These uh, breadboards were, of course, not exactly the right size to fit the tiles and It's not like they were three tiles by two tiles or anything like that, which required some uh, ingenious cutting um, to get them to fit perfectly. Not really very ingenious, just overlapping, marking the line and then cutting with a Citadel hobby saw. Um, cutting on my desk and I need a little bit of height, so I used a little um, footstool thing. Um, be careful when using any hobby saws or sharp tools to do anything like this. Once you do it, this should be the nice final result. Nothing sliding, nothing moving around, a really solid base to start building up my cyberpunk city. This is where I broke out all of my uh, pillars and walls. That's not all the pillars and walls I have, that was just the first batch. And I started to work out the kind of um, layout that I wanted to do for this table. There's obviously a lot of choice. Um, it's basically endless possibility as to what I wanted to do. But like I said, I wanted to make sure that this thing would work as a photo backdrop, so a nice L with a lot of height was perfect for me. I then had to try and uh, see how these little pieces looked on the table. These are just little accessories from Green Stuff World. I can put links below if anyone is interested and wants to pick up these uh, dumpsters or vending machines or the trash or garbage bags that I also used. Um, so this was my uh, layout as I had so far. None of this was glued down yet. I had some lights in there just to kind of play around with. They may make another appearance um, when we get to the end of the painting st um, stage. I might uh, catch some lights and make some glow. But after that, it was time to start the uh, process of gluing it all down. Anyone who's worked with these um, materials before, these uh, Necromunda of terrain pieces, knows that it's basically a click section. You put a lot of pressure, things snap into place, they fit beautifully, um, and it all just kind of works. These are the, those were the offcuts of the floors and I was thinking about how I was going to make them into balconies, um, which I eventually did, uh, which I was quite proud of. And the use of the extra materials needed, which uh, added some extra height and some more playing surface and stuff like that. And then I had to work out the stairs. It's like two flights of stairs, parallel level. I was going up two levels, so four flights of stairs. And I had to ring around a column and make it work. It was a fun exercise trying to make the flight of stairs work, but that's still separate. Um, even at the very end of this, it's separate for painting. I might not actually glue it down ever. Um, so it's a thing that you can move around and put into different locations depending on the layout that you want to do for this table. But then I just continued on with the assembly process, gluing each beat individually and uh, make sure I put a lot of pressure down to uh, lock it all in place. Cutting out more to uh, get some of the extra tile sections in. Oh, you can see the problem I had here, which was the columns didn't line up so I had to cut an end off one piece and stick it to the front of another piece it was it was a lot of extra effort but it meant that at the end of it the columns were all going to line up with each other and it was it was just it was important to me that it was that it worked perfectly it's supposed to be kind of two blank squares and then a column two blank squares and then a column I didn't want you to look at the columns from underneath and then it not line up with the columns on top that would have driven my slight OCD absolutely insane <laughs> All in all, it was an extremely fun thing to uh, to play around with. Um, having access to so many kits um, was obviously a blessing. Not everyone has access to as many kits. I purchased all of these whilst I was a, an employee for Games Workshop, which made, of course, picking up this many kits um, a lot easier. There's many alternatives for these kits out there these days, 3D printed or MDF or stuff like that. So 
If you want to make something similar and you're on a budget, then there's of course other options to do. Now I then started to work out the main section of the building. So I knew that this was going to stay relatively blank and it was going to be used dependent on my needs. So I might put all market in there. I might not have market in there. I might put loads of containers in there, make it look like a cargo hold of a ship or that kind of versatility is what I was looking for in this, especially when it came to one of the main uses I will use it for, which will be photography, maybe photography of whole armies, small armies, thousand points and that kind of thing. Stole some barricades off of the bunker section and then I had a layout that I was really pleased of. And this is the final result. Little nod to McDonald's coming up. Oh, cheeky. Hope I don't get a letter. Ramen noodles. Air conditioning units and some night neon signs. Water tower, of course. Okay, guys, and there we have it. The finished project, well, building part of the project anyway, of my first breadboard battlefield so like i said at the beginning of this video i wanted to do something that was of course usable for things like necromunda or any other of those sci-fi skirmish style games and um, the aesthetic i really wanted to lean on heavily was of course cyberpunk and um, hopefully that has come across with some of the aesthetic choices that i have decided to go for um things like neon signs and the, the rubbish the bright colors and stuff like that will come across a lot um, as this project develops further. Obviously the board's broken down into a few uh, different parts and we have the main kind of corridor area which I imagine foot traffic travels up and down and up and down the crazy city and then either side we've got something like a small market they might stop for some food or some drink or anything like that. I haven't put any little details in like that like chests with said food or drinks or guns or whatever it's going to be sold in those markets they'll all be done at the painting stage get painted up and added in and um, one of my things I'm really proud of is the little uh, kind of rubbish area here. Two skips and a pile of uh, two dumpsters for you Americans um, and a pile of rubbish bags, garbage bags, once again, for you Americans. And um, I thought that was a really nice little uh, aesthetic and something that a big industrial city like this would have a lot of down every alleyway and stuff. And um, things like the noodle sign, very inspired by things like Blade Runner, which of course I think got a lot of inspiration uh, for the cyberpunk series. Um, and then we have our kind of, it was originally like an apartment block that I wanted to go for. So that's why each wall has a door. I'd imagine each one is like a piece of living accommodation. Well, then I started playing around with signs. So now they're a little kind of shop fronts. I've got one for stims, one for guns, one for mods and um, bits and pieces like that. And um, I think where this table is really gonna shine and really come across as the necro or the cyberpunk style that I'm after is when we get to the painting stage. And um, I've created my first mood board on Pinterest, yep. Uh, and that's going to help me pick the colors that I need to choose to go along with uh, the cyberpunk style. So lots of uh, blues and fluorescent pinks, yellows for barricades, all that kind of stuff. So let's hope that I managed to pull that off. And um, it was a lot of fun to do. Uh, how modular all of the kits were, crazy things like the the barricades that are supposed to be for the stronghold work so well for walkways and um, for the normal necromunda scenery using the plastic floor tiles and then cutting them up to make balconies and walkways um maybe sacrilege to some people but i for some reason i bought way too many of those things and um, so i had a bunch of spare so i decided why not make use of them and uh yeah all the extra little details so i really hope you guys follow along for the uh part one of this interesting little uh, video series. I've never done any kind of multi-part videos before. I've never built any kind of scenery or tables before. So I really hope it resonated with you guys and you like it. If you did, make sure you drop in the comments below. Let me know what you thought about this crazy board. Any suggestions for making it feel more cyberpunky would also be much appreciated. And um, throwing those down there for me as well. Um, if you like what I do, I want to support the channel. There's a couple of ways you can do that. Uh, the simplest way is to hit that subscribe button. The more subscribers I have, the more my videos get pushed out to people, the more sponsors and stuff pay attention and uh, uh, come along knocking and help me out uh, immensely. So hit that subscribe button. It takes two seconds out of your day and it means a lot to me. 
If you really enjoy what I do and want to help me um, yourselves, then there's links to things like my Patreon up below. So I hope you guys will check that out as well. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.